Deanna and Hansen and Nora Welsh-Rees will discuss why we have grand juries in California counties, how the grand jury differs from other juries, expectations of grand jurors, how you can become a grand juror, and why you would want to, which is what I did, I wanted to. Um, two previous Sacramento grand jury forepersons will explain it all and answer your questions. Deanna Hansen founded the Hansen Consulting Group in 1984, providing management and strategic planning services to both for-profit and not-for-profit organizations. Nor has done postgraduate work in business and in accounting and holds an EDD from Virginia Tech. Please let me introduce and join me in welcoming uh, Deanna Hansen and Norv wells -Reed. Thank you, Michelle. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> there are other people either in this room or at least in Renaissance that I'm aware of that have been on the grand jury fairly recently. And I want to do a shout out because I see them all the time. Um, Jill, Cheryl was on my grand jury. Uh, Nor was on my grand, we'll talk about our, our overlap and our terms of, <laughs> terms of duty. Um, Chris Budwine, who's probably on Zoom was on our grand jury and um, of course michelle and jim and i can't remember his last name harvest oh thank you so much he's usually in here so that's why i thought i should get the name right <laughs> okay we are going to tell you about um everything you ever wanted to know about the grand jury and in a way this is hopefully kind of a recruitment message as well, because speaking for myself, I had an incredible time. Um, I learned so much about this community. I thought I knew a lot. I've been on lots of boards and commissions in this city for 40 years, but I learned so much being on the grand jury. I, I can't even begin to tell you. And fortunately or unfortunately, I started a, as a grand jury pro tem in um, 2019. And before, just before COVID, we were asked who wanted to re-up for another year. Most terms are one year. And I raised my hand because I was really having a lot of fun. And then the judge said that COVID started. So the judge made a decision that instead of being a 12 month grand jury, which is typical, it was gonna be an 18 month grand jury. And I'd already raised my hand and said, I'll do another one. So I got the distinct honor of being of the grand jury four person pro tem and then four person for a three year period of time. You would think I would know everything, but I don't. And Norm, you had a similar experience because of COVID, because he followed me as a, as a four person. So, okay, we're ready. Forgot I had to tell you. Say, where's my slides? Okay, we're gonna try to give you all the information that you ever wanted to know. And Oops, there. Okay, first of all, the grand jury is different from the typical juries. How many of you have served on a regular jury? Oh, that's a lot. Okay, and how, is there anybody else that's ever been on a grand jury? Oh, fantastic. Okay, there's a pretty big difference about your responsibilities, but the grand jury is a body of citizens and we're looking at public offenses within the county of Sacramento. So that means um, there's a lot of different agencies that make up the county of Sacramento that fall under the, the auspices of the grand jury. Of course, all the cities, 
And we have to remember that there are multiple cities in this county and all special districts. Yeah, thank you, Norm. 100 special districts. We're talking about water districts, libraries, um, fire departments. Yep. All those things that are government under the auspices of the county government or one of the cities. So that's a, that's a lot of agencies that we kind of oversee from the standpoint if somebody has a complaint or if we read something in the paper and say, oh my goodness, <laughs> the grand jury should take a look at that. And that has happened. And um, the other thing that the, the grand jury also is, um, whoops, overseas is all of the education systems that are public school districts. So not the universities, not the community colleges, but all the school districts in the county that are public schools. Is that right? Guess we just never had any problems with our community colleges. We didn't go there. <laughs> oh, that's right. So there's 19 members, seated members of the grand jury, plus 11 alternates. So that's a total of 30. Yeah. Am I counting right? That they have to say, pull the name out of the hat, and yes, you will be on the grand jury. And that's kind of how we'll get into more of how the how you become a member. But it really is a, in big part the luck of the draw, pulling a name out of a hat once everybody's been vetted and, and interviewed and things like that. Yeah, that's, that's right. I was really lucky. I got on the first time, but that doesn't happen all that often. I think, Michelle, you also tried more than once. Ah, okay. So there are three different types of grand juries. The civil grand jury, which is what we spend the majority of our time doing, is really anything that comes in that's a complaint. And by the way, anybody can issue a complaint, just go online, there's a nice complaint form there, send it in and the grand jury will take a look at everything and then decide which things are, you know, either from an, a time constraint standpoint or which are the most important because sometimes we end up with a whole heap. And sometimes if we get stuff from out of county. We notice that there are particularly a great number of uh, charges or complaints that came in sometimes from uh, prisons that were not within our jurisdiction. Oh, prisons, though, are within the jurisdiction of the grand jury. <clears throat> um, the investigative grand criminal grand jury and the indictment grand jury, they kind of work hand in hand, depending upon the investigative portion, whether or not it ends up resulting in something that's chargeable. And um, during my three years being on, we actually had three different uh, complaints <laughs> that came from the, count, the California State Attorney General asking us here in Sacramento to take a look at this further. Um, and there's five counties that have been given jurisdiction by the state of California so that they can be commandeered into something that goes further. I think it would be really fun to be in Washington, D.C. or... <laughs> But I have to tell you, Washington, D.C. does not have a grand jury, and neither does Pennsylvania or Connecticut. Those are the only two states that don't have a grand jury system. In California, every single county has a grand jury. There are some that don't meet as often, um, and maybe some that kind of meet, merge, yes, because there's such small counties. Uh, but there are basically 
99 separate entities that are represented by grand juries in the state of California. So a grand jury and a trial jury, a pettit jury, I think we've just kind of talked a little bit about the difference there. So here's some more specificity. The grand jury has a qualification system for being on the grand jury, but it's pretty broad. I would say that there is not a single person in this room who couldn't qualify for the grand jury, unless you're not a citizen um, or you don't live in the county. <laughs> then you go to your own county. Uh, <clears throat> We, we have a wealth of special training. There's an organization called the California Grand Juror, Juror Association, and they provide training. They're made up of past grand juries members, and they do a really, really good job of training all of the different grand juries on what they should and shouldn't, could and couldn't do. There's a budget. We can hire an expert, although I would say that that's pretty rare. <laughs> um, and, oh, this is a really good one. We're subject to arrest if we talk about anything that we're working on, anybody we've interviewed, any materials that we've requested. We, and in the rest of our lives, we can never talk about that again. <laughs> which includes spouses. So <laughs> I didn't have that problem. <laughs> I didn't have anybody I needed to tell anything to, but that is that whole secrecy piece is really, really important. Wh I'm sorry? Um, we also uh, do written reports and hopefully you've read articles about that. I don't know if you've actually gone onto the grand jury website and looked at past reports, but they're there for many years and they tell in detail exactly what went on uh, with the caveat that we still didn't put in the reports exactly who we got some of the information from. But other than that, once the reports have been made public, then uh, we can talk about them whatever the information was that we said we were we were going to tell the uh the b <laughs> and i have to say that during my t term of office we did our reports immediately after we finished an investigation and that way we could give it to the b and we could quickly get their involvement in publicizing it so it didn't used to be that way, nor have you did some one way and some another way. So it used to be that they saved everything up and published a big report at the end of the, this, the fiscal year. So all the reports came out at the same time in June, and obviously some of them got lost because they weren't of interest sometimes 10, 11 months later to the public. So we found that we got a lot more leverage. One of the probably biggest frustrations I think most grand jurors have is that what we agree to is not binding. It's not like we can say, arrest this person. <laughs> so we do all of this work do all the investigation, write the reports, and then sometimes not a whole lot comes of that. And that's why we decided we were going to immediately go to the press and make sure that they thought it was important because that's a lot easier to get the word out. And it did make a difference. Um, <clears throat> we do a lot of uh, interviews. So... For example, any elected official can be called to be questioned and, and interviewed. And we did a lot of elected official interviews. We did a lot of heads of county offices, uh, cities, 
we went to lots and lots of meetings, city council meetings, et cetera, gathering information, not saying anything about why we were there, but just listening and gathering information and writing it up. So, as I said, it's a misdemeanor if we did anything that we shouldn't be communicating. A regular jury is 19, is 12 people as opposed to 19 on the grand jury. That's, that's a big difference. Okay, civil and criminal grand juries all operate under the auspices of the Sacramento County Superior Court. We have a judicial advisor, and right now I think it's still Judge Gaverser. And um, Judy Hersher, who many of you know, Mike Hersher's wife, Judy, was our judicial advisor prior to uh, Judge Gaverser. There's a grand jury coordinator who is a wonderful, Indy still is there, right? Oh my gosh, I don't know how that woman does all that she does, but she is fabulous. I w always wish I had been lucky enough to have a secretary as competent as Indy is. And the district attorney, of course, and the California attorney general, is the one who brings us anything that's beyond the scope of the county that they want assistance with. <clears throat> so a grand jury does not determine innocence or guilt. A grand jury is gathering information. Regular trial juries determine innocence or guilt. So if, if one of the statewide issues that comes up that the attorney general says, grand jury in Sacramento, would you take this one on? Then that could result in a group of people or a person being charged with a crime. And that has happened. And I don't, sometimes we, it takes a long time for the state district attorney to, to get the results out, but I do know that there's at least one that resulted in charges. So I, I just covered the statewide jurisdiction part and this county civil grand jury. I think I told you all this stuff, um, but we're basically there to be the watchdog Somebody's got to be the watchdog for the taxpayers. And that's why the grand jury system throughout the country has become very important. And we see the results of that in some other states, particularly uh, recently. So is it your, is it your turn, Norm? No, I want, I want to go through these these next two. Okay. <clears throat> the most important thing, if you are interested in being on the grand jury, is that you have to be able to collaborate. You have to be able to work individually and with other people. And that's part of what I think the main reason why the interviews take place is so that others that have been involved and been on the grand jury can kind of begin to assess whether this person is a collaborator or prefers to work by themselves. And we always end up with some of each. And as Michelle stated, there's always people every year that don't do as much work as others. <laughs> That's true of any group, am I right? <laughs> we also really need people who can write and edit because we do all of that ourselves. Of course, I don't know now, are you using any AI? We didn't have that capability. And we have to know a little bit about using technology. And we definitely have to have leadership skills because everybody takes part in committees. So. <laughs> the hardest thing for most of us 
is setting aside personal biases. And having the willingness to come forward, though, and say, you know what, this is a problem, and stick to your guns. Uh, I remember the very first one that we worked on in my first grand jury term was the homelessness situation. Now that was nine, that was 2019. That has not yet been solved, but there have been multiple recommendations made by multiple grand juries <laughs> regarding things that that could or should be done. Uh, we need to have the ability to make our case if we feel strongly about something or that we think this is this is a problem. So, and Norv will talk about what, what this constitutes in terms of time, but energy and stamina is a very important part of this grand jury system. We do a lot of work. And I know as four person, it's, they say it's possibly 25, 30 hours. I would guess 40 plus is more typical for a four person or a, a pro tem or committee chair. <laughs> so you gotta be ready for that. No questions or later, thank you. <laughs> Don't be sorry. I was almost gonna say at the very beginning that if you guys wanted to raise your hand and ask questions throughout, but I, Chris doesn't like it when we do that. Uh, the Zoom audience. The Zoom audience. No, I know he has rules. So, Norv, why don't you take it from here? The activities. Yeah, I just have to find which one is up. My eyes don't work like they used to work. Hi. Um, this lady sitting here, Beth Tenpass, is the current four person, by the way, and she has a sign up sheet here. So if if we get you excited enough, please stop by and see Beth. It get there real close. Yeah. I'm used to uh, a lavalier mic. It works a lot better, and I have a tendency to use my my hands like crazy. So what do we do? Well, one of the things is review review citizen complaints. There's a forum. People can say, hey, um, I'm aware of this water district, and they're really screwed up. And can you guys fix it? <clears throat> uh, so we review those kinds of citizen complaints. Um, we have to go to all the meetings, both those that are the plenary, is when all of the grand jurors meet together, all 19 people in a sacred chamber. Oh, a secret sacred chamber. Um, For those of you that know me, can you imagine me following the rules? <laughs> uh, and then we have the, the committees, and I'll talk about those in a minute. Uh, we tour the detention facilities. That means every single jail in Sacramento, including the state prisons, of which there are two. Those are fascinating to go to. But also, I mean, we went to the juvenile detention center. Really a different perspective on, on what happens in our in our judicial system. Uh, we, can, as, as, as Deanna said earlier, we conduct interviews. We talk to lots of different kinds of people. And I've talked uh, when I was uh, education chairman. I, I talked to uh, school school uh, principals. They were part of an uh, if they were part of an investigation. Public officials and and when when we ask a member of the board of supervisors if we can have an interview, you know what? We get one. <laughs> it's really cool. They know we have subpoena power. I've had people saying, I don't want to talk to you. And I said, well, I don't care. <laughs> you have to. <laughs> well, what if I don't come? Well, then I'll send the sheriff. Oh, okay. I'll come. Uh, we produce reports. And this is really important because the grand jury just doesn't look into stuff. It produces reports. And those reports have findings, which is these are all the things that we looked at. And then... And this is really important. We develop a set of recommendations. We don't just say this is a problem. We develop recommendations on how to solve that problem. 
Whoops, I went the wrong way. Oh, well, oh, I said I'm using the up arrow instead of the down arrow, you know? Ah, so who is it? So we have a four person, and that's appointed by Judge Gaverser. But then once the once the judge appoints the grand jury and the four person, then they're a self-governing entity. And so the the four person appoints the pro tem, that's like like the assistant. Uh, the secretary that keeps all the notes and the minutes and all that stuff. A sergeant at arms. My my sergeant at arms was was notorious for saying, "Attention." Room and quiet down. It was great. You have committee chairs. I'll go through the committees in a second, and then you all they have to participate on committees, two investigation committees, and one of the support committees. We said 25 to 30 hours a week. Uh, there are times when you'll be putting a lot more time than that in. Uh, it depends on the complexity uh, and the, uh, of the investigations that you're doing. And remember, you're working on three different committees. So it's not just one committee where you're working uh, and have, have to attend their meetings. You get big money, though. Hey, it includes parking downtown. But I think that may be raised. Is it still 30? Oh, 30. Yeah. Like 60. Yeah. Gee, am I real? Yeah. <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> um, so those are all the things you have to do. So these are the committees. This is how we're structured. I'm assuming, Beth, you're still structured the same way. Smart a little different. Okay. So uh, the administrative and municipal affairs is the one that does most of the government entities, like cities, uh, county agencies, things like that. That's that's the first committee. The second one, criminal and juvenile justice, is the one that coordinates all the visitations to the detention facilities, and they will write reports. Uh, the last grand jury had a report on privacy issues for this for the sheriff and the police department and uh Deanna's uh, jury had a had an extensive report that ended up with um uh well you you can read it but it deals with the mental health facilities and expanding the downtown jail so that that some interesting things education committee looks at the 13 school districts in Cal in Sacramento County and the Los Rios Community College district as one one school district up north is like all of 300 students, and then you've got that little place down in Elk Grove, <laughs> the largest school district in the state, I think. Environmental, public works, and special districts deals with environmental issues. They also deal with special districts, and as Dina mentioned, Deanna mentioned earlier, there are a hundred special districts in Sacramento County. There are a thousand in the state. Those special districts do everything from water districts to fire departments to you name it. And they are really an anachronism of two centuries ago, but they still exist. And, you know, they sometimes don't follow the rules very well. And then Health and Human Services looks at health issues. Certainly during the COVID time, that was a really, really critical committee. And that was that was Deanna's, Deanna's jury. Uh, the support committees, and you say they're a little different now, but uh, Deanna started a communications committee that was really, really important for us because that's when we really started getting the word out because the grand jury's most effective tool is getting the people to understand what's going on. And so the communications committee started the, the ball rolling on getting reports out so that instead of sending out one report where some really bad stuff might get lost. A report came out on a water district, and boy, did that water district notice that they were on the front page of the beat. You get their attention that way. So uh, continuity committee is the one that ensures the transition from Deanna to me to Steve to Beth. <laughs> Uh, and so you, you have to make sure there's some consistency and you have to have to pass the knowledge because the terms are constantly changing. So you've got to have some way of maintaining that, that, uh, that 
common common sense of history, the the the, the history of, of the organization. The edit committee is the one that makes sure there's a common voice. It looks at all the reports, and you know some of the committees have really good writers and some don't. So the edit committee is the one that makes it all it all look good. And the technology committee is the one that keeps it running. Do you guys still have computers? Yeah. It was a really big deal. My jury got computers for the next jury because all of our folks had to have their own computer. And so we got computers, but unfortunately the county got its fingers into them. <laughs> so, but uh, every, every the use of technology is really critical. Uh, it, it's the old grand juries functioned on paper. They don't anymore. It's all, it's all computer technology. So it's term starts off in June. You get some training. There's two kinds of trainings. One is done by our local jury here. And then one is done by the California grand jurors association. They just changed their name, I think. And, um, so there's there's quite a bit of training that happens in June, uh, and then uh, you do your basic organization. Uh, you bring your committees together. You 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 do appointments to committees. You select, uh, or the or the or the four person selects pro tems, committee chairs, and the other officers. Uh, you then look at past reports, one to see how they've done it, but two to see what they what they looked at, what kinds of things were important. Uh, and then you start in July, August to develop your investigations. You've got to have this whole thing done by April, May. And you've got a lot of research to do. So you've got to figure out what it is you're going to look at and get started and start looking at it right away. So you start that off in, in July, August. Um, one of the things is... Um, it, it talks about the investigation proposals. Investigations don't happen unless a supermajority, 12, 12, 12 of the 19 jurors agree that it will go forward. So somebody may have an idea, and maybe they can't sell it to their committee, but they're going to bring it up anyway. But you, in order for an investigation to move forward, either from a committee, committee or from an individual member of the jury, you've got to have the, at least 12 jurors agree this will be an investigation. So that already ensures there's pretty substantive issues that get looked at. Um, in September, October, November, you're doing your investigations, you're doing your interviews, uh, you're developing, starting to develop draft reports. Um, oh, and then you have to worry about the next grand jury coming on, which is why Beth's here. Because here she is, she's just started. She's only been in office since June, and she's already trying to replace herself. And, you know, it's it's really important that the jury, the grand jury, has diversity. And that's all kinds of diversity. Now, one of the restrictions is at 25 to 40 hours a week, that sort of cuts out people that don't have full-time jobs. But if you don't have a full-time job, this is, a, this is a good way to transition. Are you mentioning this in your course, Ken? This is a good way to transition into retirement. Take a term as a grand juror. Uh, uh, so, but they're going to start uh, interviewing all the applicants. They they have a, like an invitation to a to a, a, a group meeting in in one of the jury rooms, um, and uh, they'll talk about the grand jury and it, its structure. Sort of an expanded version of this talk, actually. And then um, those that say, "Yeah, I'll, I'll I'll stick with this," and then they do interviews of all those people. And then based on those interviews. Uh, a, a list of people of recommended candidates is sent to a judicial panel. They do a final screen of them, and then they go to this big room where, as Deanna mentioned, there's a text that looks like the old days of a bingo. You know, one of those bingo things. They rotate that thing down, and they reach in, and they pull out a name, and that's how you get on the jury. Michelle said three times. I did three times. Deanna was the first time. 
So when I, when I finally got the third time, um, it was like I was juror number seven. So, <laughs> oh, I had a name finally. April and May, the reports are finalized. In June, it's wrapped up. The final report is done. And then you transition to the new jury. So it's a one-year commitment. Now those trial juries, those petty juries, that's one trial. This is, goes on for years. You have to commit a year to this. It doesn't mean you can't sneak a trip in or something. I had one of, one of, one of my committee chairs attended a meeting from Portugal. Yeah. But he was there. Zoom has made all the difference, all the difference. So investigations come from citizens' complaints or they can be juror-initiated. A juror can know of an issue and uh, bring it to their committee and see if they can develop an investigation from it. So they come, they come both ways. And I'd say it's probably a pretty even mix. Uh, in fact, I'd say maybe juror-initiated is probably a little bit more because the folks that apply for grand juries know about their communities. And they know what kind of issues there are. Uh, and in the past, juries have, have tackled COVID. That would seem to be a kind of a significant issue in Sacramento County a couple of years ago, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, homelessness, that was a big issue. So those are where they come more from the jury. Anyone can submit a complaint. There's a form that you fill online, and every single one of those complaints will get reviewed. Uh, initially by the foreperson. Foreperson will then frequently pass it to a committee chair and say, hey, what does this look like? Is there substance here? Is this an issue we should go for? Um, the press, public meetings, personal knowledge. But as I said earlier, a proposal for an investigation gets developed, and then that goes to the full grand jury and has to be accepted by them before it goes into effect. An investigation does not happen unless at least 12 of the jurors say this is an issue that should be pursued. The committees, it then goes to a committee. All, all investigations get assigned to the committees. The whole grand jury does not do an investigation. Uh, they're going to figure out how to do it, and they'll do a proposal, and it's going to include things like the issues, what documents, what kind of documents do they need to look at, do they need to look at budgets, do they need to look at minutes of board meetings, uh, do they need to look at audit reports. Um, they'll, talk, they'll, they'll discuss who to interview. Who are the critical people that we can talk to? And frequently, the interviews that they do lead to other interviews. So it's a very dynamic process. This is really not a boring, this is not going to be a boring year for you, I guarantee you. And then they set a timeline because these things have to be completed and the report has to get written in April. And the quicker you can get a report done, the quicker it gets released. So there was a, one of one of Deanna's reports got released in January, which meant that the agency that was uh, subject to the investigation had to get a response back to the jury within sixty days. Yeah, that was sixty days because it didn't include a, and and that meant that the jury was able to look at it again and see, is their response sufficient and adequate? And that was really an advantage for that in that particular issue. Um, so just, just to give you an example of what kinds of things have been looked at. Um, special districts, as I said, there's a hundred special districts. Um, one, a couple of water districts. One was the uh, uh, Rancho Marietta Community Services District that seemed to have a little money problem and a little bit of people on multiple boards at the same time. Uh, local governments, the city of Ialton, one of the, one of the, 
one of the one of the council persons died, and the rest of the city council people said, eh, "We don't need to replace her." Yeah, uh, yes, they did. By the way, <laughs> uh, a lot of COVID, during there were a lot of COVID nineteen uh, reports that were done. Uh, one dealt with the mishandling of finances by the board of supervisors. Uh, major mishandling, I might mention. And uh, the other was delivery missteps on the public health side. I mean, they didn't, uh, they didn't provide any support to the public health department until the end of April, I think. It was a long time before they did anything. They just thought it would go away, you know. Uh, homelessness, that was uh, the grand jury I had dealt with with homelessness as one of its major issues. Uh, it was a recommendation on forming a joint powers authority that, by the way, got picked up by Assemblyman McCarty as state legislation. Uh, now, he's running for mayor. <laughs> so we'll we'll see what happens. But he's got a good roadmap, roadmap from the grand jury on that. They also looked at um, uh, issues of mental health and what kinds of things can be done to help address mental health issues uh, with with the homeless population. One of the things they found is that if you're not, if you don't have a mental health challenge when you become homeless, you're probably going to have it <laughs> very shortly. Uh, public safety issues, privacy issues and facility improvements, especially for the jail, school. Uh, the school did, uh, there was one on uh, the need to do COVID vaccinations. Uh, and uh, one of the most, one of the recent report dealt with special education in Sac, Sac City Unified. So those are, that's like, that's the variety of the kinds of things you look at. So it's, there's a lot going on and it's really interesting. Um, I call this a graduate course in public service. And and when you finish it, you probably should get a degree. But if you if you want to learn about your community, and if you want to make a contribution to your community, this is one of the best things you can do. Uh, all the reports are available on the website, which is here. Now, if you can't remember the website, just Google Sacramento County Grand Jury. Or use the use the the thing there and the new QR, code. QR code. Thank you. It takes you right to the website. Uh, the applications are they open yet? Not quite. November twentieth, they come open. Uh, but go ahead and get the application so that you know what you have to fill out. I want to add one thing. Yes, ma'am. The mic. The best part of being involved with the grand jury is the friends that you make. Kind of like Renaissance. Really incredible because we spend so much time together. And we found in my first term, we found the most delightful little cafe. <laughs> so Groups of us would go to lunch every day. Now, during COVID, we had a little more trouble because a lot of our meetings had to be on Zoom. But uh, seriously, it, it is an amazing opportunity. I can't say that strongly enough. So are we ready for questions? Ready for well, anybody in the audience? I have one while we're waiting. Let me just take that. Uh, this is more of a comment than a question from the Zoom. It says, um, I served as the secretary of the 2016-17 Sacramento County Grand Jury. We did just one report with all of our investigations included. None of them got picked up by the B. I applaud the juries that publish each investigation separately, and I'm always pleased to see the news articles. So uh, that was a good comment. There was also one question or a comment says, will the person looking to sign people up to take names from the Zoom audience, will the person looking, to, I guess we gotta maybe show her the QR code. Yeah. Well, they have their, they have the um, grand jury website. They can yeah. go to that. Yeah. 
Sigrid. Step first. <clears throat> Sigrid. Oh, oh, oh. Is anyone required to read those reports? The, the people that they are addressed to, yes, they are, and they have to respond. Oh, that's right. They have to respond, and then the and right. grand jury sees if they responded to the questions. Yes. Um, I have two. I have two questions. Uh, how many applicants do you get per year? Probably, probably around a hundred. One fifty. One one fifty last year, and after the the first uh, information session, it usually drops down to maybe seventy or eighty, uh, and about sixty names will go forward from the judicial council to the uh, to the spinning cage, to the so, spinning cage. So you pick about half of them, right? And in the mi middle of that, they're interviewed. By typically former grand jurors are on the interview panel. My my second question is, how many um, complaints uh, do you get per year? Whew. That really varies, but I would say I'm thinking about the size of the complaint file that was in our file cabinet. <laughs> I, I I'd well fifteen or twenty that were. Mm, made that were okay, that we're in the right place. So people don't send them to the Sacramento County. If they're in Placer County, they get mixed up. So but yeah, I'd 20, say is it, 20, saying... 25 from the public. 20, 20 or 25 for you, right. I think. Uh, I remember the time that we made the tours of the, the, uh, the, uh, no, in the prisons, and they were really shocking to me. It was very sad to see how small the scales, the cells were, and uh, there was a place where they showed uh, where there was some a folk singer who came and sp sang. Johnny Cash. Johnny Cash. We went to see where Johnny Cash. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> there's a plaque. Yeah, <laughs> and and uh, it 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 just you saw that uh, you saw that the jails really need a lot of help. It was some of it was just so terrible to think about and and go home and think about that. Thank you. Are there some complaints that just never get looked at by the grand jury or you never get to them, them or what is the backlog like? They all get looked at. Yeah. They all get looked at. Not, not a single complaint does not get reviewed, but not all the complaints are worthy of conducting an investigation. Uh, they might be a, 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 a two problems. There's not enough None of they're there. Uh, sometimes they're too specific. My son got sent to jail, and I don't think the police handled it well. So, you know, you kind of get a range of, of, of complaints. So they all get looked at. Um, and then if it looks like there's merit, they're going to get passed onto a committee that's going to say, can we do it? That's, that's part of the issue is the committee may not have the bandwidth to be able to handle an investigation, but they do all get looked at. So uh, my question is if, if through the process you have uh, more than a few uh, suggestions that are meritorious, uh, but you clearly don't have enough time and resources to address all of them, uh, how is the decision made given that they are all meritorious? I'm not sure we had that problem in the three years that I was there. Um, I, we never ran out of viable issues that we could work on, but I don't remember there being big fights. Uh, no, I, I don't remember fights, but I do know that sometimes they get passed on to the next jury. Some, some of the complaints come in really late. 
Like we get a complaint in February that talks about, say, major challenges, uh, accounting challenges in a special district. Can't do that. But we'll pass them on to the next jury and they'll they'll review it and see if they'll want to take it up. I'm wondering uh, what kind of support do you get, do the committees get from legal staff and, and lawyers? We have access to county council and in my terms, they were terrific on giving us legal advice um, and the right kind of legal advice. I mean, you know, we're lay people, even though we had some legal people on the grand jury. <laughs> Um, it, we needed to, to have somebody else take a look at it. And even the judge, if we went to him with a question, he was very willing to give us advice, not tell us you can or can't, but to at least say, consider this. Um, I was just reading the 2023 report on the, the Sacramento County jail and I covered jails and prisons for a long time. It's, you know, the medical care there is terrible. They're often referred to as the new asylums because there are so many mentally ill people in the, in the jails and prisons. D did you see actual results from that report? And, and can you speak to the uh, issue of results from the many reports that are issued? I think the results are one of the challenges, but yes, we did see that. Uh, within six months, uh, there was a proposal before the Board of Supervisors to fund an expansion of the jail. And that expansion is going to be medical facilities. Um, so, yeah. Well, you know, there's, there's, a, there's a school of thought that's, that's no incarceration. And that's, uh, they frequently speak very loudly at Board of Supervisors meetings, but you've got those people and they're in that facility and they have to get taken care of. So, yeah. So yes, there, there are results. The other, the other issue I think is if you can get the kind of publicity that the last couple of juries have been able to get, that you can get those reports out rather than doing one report, do targeted reports going out uh, that gets more attention and it increases the probability of action being taken. Um, mine was regarding results as well. Over the last three or four years, what's the most significant turnaround you have seen as a result of one of your investigative reports? Oh. Well, I, I think the one I just mentioned, uh, the finally committing to an, an, uh, an, 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 in addition to the jail, um, the special district ones were good because one was a, a, a district that had nine wells, seven of which were non-operational. The other two were running at 90%. And the district didn't want to put uh, water meters in, which would have qualified them for a lot of external funding. The grand jury got their attention and um, may, ha, has made some things start to happen. Uh, the, um, uh, the Rancho Marietta uh, district realized it had to really get a good audit done and it had to get its finances shaped up and and find some way of putting some barriers between uh, the residential community and uh, the, the golf course. Uh, so, um, so yeah, some so there are some some real significant outcomes that happen. Sometimes when you're talking to the board of supervisors, uh, they're not quite as amenable to recommendations from amateurs as uh, we might hope they might be. Uh, but it does get their attention, and they know that people are watching what they're doing. And I, that's what's really, really significant, that people watch, or they're aware that people are watching what they're doing. 
what qualifications are considered desirable to serve on the grand jury? And how will the decision be made uh, for, for selection? Well, there's, there's several steps, but um, I think that the desirability piece is that you're interested in doing something for the community, that you're willing to learn more about the various issues that face our community, and you really are willing to spend that kind of time because, as I said, it's, it's a lengthy period of time. And uh, writing skills. I think, yeah, I think writing is a very, very big one. Mm -hmm. The whole communications piece is extremely important. Um, we'd like to have some younger people. <laughs> and <clears throat> so, if, so if you're 60, yeah, if you're 60. <laughs> Now, I was in, in my mid-70s when I was on the grand jury, so you don't have to be that young. Uh, and and we'll, we'll hang around for a few minutes afterwards. All right, well, thank you so much. So you're gonna have... Yes, well, thank you. Uh, another round of applause, please. This was really very enlightening. Thank you, Deanna. Thank you, North.